Zechariah chapter 4 verse 67. Zechariah sura 4 mstari wa 67. So he answered and said to me. Na hivyo basi akawajibu akawaambia. Who answered? The Lord answered. Nani alijibu ni Bwana ambaye aliwajibu. And said to Zerubbabel. Na akamwambia Zerubbabel. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Hili ndilo neno la Bwana kwa Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power. Si kwa nguvu ama uwezo. But by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. Lakini kwa roho wangu wasema Bwana wa majeshi. Verse 7. Mstari wa 7. Who are you O great mountain? Wewe ni nani mlima mkuu? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain. Mbele ya Zerubbabel utakuwa umenyonyoka. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Na atajileta jiwe kuli kisema utukufu, utukufu kwa. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14 and 15. Isaiah 41, 14, 15. Fear not you warm Jacob. You men of Israel. Enyi watu wa Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, as your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small. And make the hills like chaff. And finally, Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Says, Asem. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. These want to go. These who have turned the world upside down have come here before we go, if you know you are a parent, how many parents do we have in the house? And you are a parent of a three year old and below. How many are here? Three years and below. And you took your child to the class and they are alone there. They are two years, they are one and a half years. That you rise up so that you can go sit with your child as they learn so that they can give the teacher a good time to teach. Amen. Few years ago, I went into that class in a favor class. <laughs> and uko ndio unapata watoto wako chini ya meza wako kila mahali until you wondering this teacher baka unashanga huyu mwalimu anafunza aje na hao watoto wanaelewa kweli imagine wanaelewa bwana asifiwe but we want you to also be a part of the learning of your child amen amen bwana asifiwe and if you are any other child any other age above 3 and you are in or your child is here please release them to the Sunday school where they'll be taught at their level. And the Lord bless you. Going back to Acts chapter 17 verse 6. Acts 17. These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. And so there are people who can turn the world upside down. Amen. And these are people who are able to ask their mountains to identify themselves. Amen. Now the story that we first read in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. The story where uh, 
Zechariah um, where, where Zerubbabel is being spoken to by the Lord. And he's being told it's not by might neither by power Na. but it is by the spirit says the Lord. The backdrop of this story is found in the book of Ezra chapter 4, chapter 5 and chapter 6. This is a moment where the Israelites have been in captivity and now there's a king who has arisen who is called King Cyrus and this king is used of the Lord so that the Israelites can go back to their land and be able to reconstruct their land and their temple and, and so as the Israelites have gone back to their land Zerubbabel, whom we are hearing here, becomes the governor of the land. And Joshua becomes the priest. And so they begin constructing as they were instructed by King Cyrus, whom the Lord had used. And as they started putting the materials together so that the construction can continue, the Bible says that the people who had been in the enemy's camp came to them in Ezra chapter 4 verse 2. And so they came to them and were telling them, you know what, we can join you in the construction because even us, we've been sacrificing to this God. But Zerubbabel and Joshua knew better and so they refused to allow these people to come and infiltrate them. Why? Because the enemy knows very well that for him to be able to operate quite well, he needs to operate from the inside and not from the outside. That's why most of the times in the financial institutions, the banking sectors and the like, when there is a robbery that has taken place, most of the time you hear it was an inside job. Because an inside person is able to know the systems that are operating in that place and therefore is able to share now with the enemy outside. And this is what the enemies of the Israelites wanted to do. And so they were trying to deceive them by telling them, you know we have also been sacrificing to this same God. And so Zerubbabel, when Zerubbabel and Joshua refused, the men rose up in arms and started hindering them, started opposing the work that they were doing originally. And as they started hindering, the first thing they did, they went to the governor, I mean to the king who was now there in the country of Babylon, the country that had held Israel captive in the past. Now, now, remember that by this time, King Cyrus had already served his term and is out of office. And so there arose another king who did not know the agreement that the Israelites had entered into with the king. And immediately they went and accused them there. The Bible says that the king decided that that work of the construction has to cease. And therefore, the work ceased for a period of time. And hence a delay. 
And then afterwards, as you continue reading in the book of Ezra, the Bible says that the Israelites gathered all the documents that they had been given when they were being escorted out of Babylon, the documents that stated that they were given permission by the king to construct a temple. And they went and presented it. And so at this time in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 and 7, this is the story that is going on. This is the battle that is going on. And Zerubbabel is almost beginning to feel like giving up. Because when things become thick in your life, the first thing you normally think of is quitting. He, he is thinking it is better if I let it go. Joshua the high priest is also thinking it is better if I let it go. These enemies are too strong for me. Just like many times when we go through tough things in our marriages, we think I cannot accommodate it anymore. I am going to quit. You, you, you go through a hard place in your office and you're thinking, it is okay if I wrote a resignation letter and left. Worse still, if life in itself is offering difficult things in your life, you even think it is okay for me to commit suicide. When, when you go for burials of old people, you start wondering, why wasn't I the one who died? Because, because you're feeling you cannot take it in anymore. And so this is what Zerubbabel and Joshua were feeling. Feeling like giving up. Feeling like throwing in the towel. And so the Lord looks at them and steps into the scene. And that's what we read in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, if we can read it again. And so he answered to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. So the Lord has stepped into the scene and is telling Zerubbabel, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. In other words, the Lord is telling Zerubbabel, you have tried with your muscle. You have tried with your wisdom. You have tried with your purpose. You have tried all that is humanly possible. Now step aside and see me doing it. It's not by power. It's not by might. But it is by the spirit of God. And I can hear the Lord telling somebody here this morning. You, you have tried all you know how to do, my daughter. You have tried all you know how to do, my son. Now step aside. I'm taking over the battle. And it is not by might. It's not by power. It is by my spirit. The Lord, the Lord is saying, I know you've done all it takes to do for a son to walk upright, but this son is already insisting, continuing with the drugs. Now step aside, I want to handle him for you. He, I can hear a wife here being told, can you hand over your husband to me? I can hear a husband here being told, can you hand over your wife to me? The battle now it is not you. Yours, it is mine. It is not by might, neither by power. Praise the name of the Lord. And then in verse 7, what does it say? It begins with the Lord asking a question. Who are you, O great mountain? 
Ya anza kwa Bwana kuuliza swali ewe ni nani mlima mkuu? It, it's like many times when someone umeona mtu amekuja sana, someone comes too much. Is that the English word? Comes too much. Mtu <laughs> amezidi sana. And then you begin asking them who do you think you are? Alafu unamuuliza wafikiri kwamba wewe ni nani? So the question is to this mountain, this problem that is standing before Zerubbabel and the Lord is asking who are you O great mountain? Na Bwana anauliza wewe ni nani? And this morning we have mountains that have been existing in our lives that are always hiding as anonymous and because they are anonymous you are not able to handle them. I want someone to arise in their hearts and decree and declare and begin asking a question. Who are you mountain? Can you expose yourself today? You who has been bothering my, my, my business, who are you? Can you identify yourself? You who has been bothering my marriage, who are you? Can you identify yourself? Because there are times when we fight battles, but we fight them the wrong way. And we fight the wrong enemy. You begin fighting your spouse, yet it is not the spouse. There is a mountain beyond the spouse that you need to identify themselves. There is a mountain beyond your boss and you keep fighting with your boss. There is no need of fighting a human being in this year 2024. We, we need the mountains to identify themselves. And so the question is, who are you, O oh great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a level plane. And today I can hear the Lord asking the same question. Who are you, O oh mountain? Who has been bothering Sister Mary? Who are you, O oh mountain? Who has been bothering Brother so and so? Before brother so and so you are becoming a level mount, a level bele, ground. Bele adugu, huyu, wewe, ni In the name of Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It is time for us also to join the Lord and to begin asking, who are you mountain? Umefika wakati wa kujiunganisha na Bwana tuulize wewe ni nani mlima? A few years ago. Miaka michoacha iliyopita. In the year 20 2016 I remember there's a time I was in prayer and so one night I went to sleep and I had a very weird dream in the dream a being presented itself a being <laughs> A being pre presented itself. And it was an ugly being. And so it began fighting. We fought and we fought. And we fought. You know? And then it got to a point the being withdrew and looked at me and asked me do you know who I am? And then I asked sarcastically, so who are you? In the dream, so who are you? And it gave me a name, a very strange name. And then it proceeded to say, you have been trying to hinder my mission in this place. But I want to let you know that this time you are not. You cannot continue operating in this environment. And I remember shouting. And I told it. The blood of Jesus is against you. I will operate in this place in Jesus name. 
and I woke up. At that moment, I woke up. And I remember I didn't go back to sleep. It was at 4 a.m. And I began dealing with it. Because now it had identified itself. It had given itself a name. For as long as I did not know who it was, it was difficult to fight. It had an advantage over me. But as soon as I got to know the name, and I know that whatever has a name has an ear, and it can hear the word of the Lord, then now I had an upper hand. This morning, it's my prayer, my brother, my sister, that you can arise in the spirit and become angry and remove from yourself the people you have been fighting and begin asking, who are you, O great mountain? Who are you, O great mountain? Because it has to identify itself. It has to identify itself. It cannot continue hiding in anonymity. On Friday, we went for the apostolic visit. Amen. And our bishop, Bishop Mark Karioki, Bishop Dr. Mark Karioki, as he was speaking, there's a phrase he kept using. <laughs> and he told us that in this year of threshing the mountains, to Siruhusu Shetani, let us not allow the devil, that every other time, atakuwa na kukuta, anakuambia, ma! Akushtu. Muna nielewa? Ma! In, in my mother tongue, we call it a buogi. <laughs> I don't know what you call it in your mother tongue. And you know, that's what the enemy wants to keep. He comes into your marriage, he goes like, ma. He comes into your parenting with your children, he goes like, ma. He goes into your business, ma. Imagine I wrote that day when we were told to pray. I was so angry and I told the enemy, you know what? You are not going to continue marrying me. It's time over. Amen. It's time up. Amen. Those areas that the enemy has been entering from time to time, and then he mars you and you take off. You go looking, also, you look for your pastor, you look for who? No. The Bible says that all power in heaven and earth has been given to you. Hallelujah. Therefore, before you come to look for the pastor, can you tell the enemy you are not going to mar me again? I am arising above my circumstances. Amen. I am rising above my circumstances. Because, you know, the Bible says that the enemy is like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. He is like a roaring lion. He is a, li a lion that is toothless. Like a roaring lion. It is time to tell the enemy, time is up in your life, in my life. Your time is over in my family. Your time is over in my children. Your time is over in our nation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want to bring it to you this morning that there is normally no vacancy for you or for me that there's just a reserved place waiting for Pastor Millicent to go and walk through freely. There is no such a thing. In other words, what am I saying? Nothing will be offered to you in a silver platter. You have to arise and claim it by force. When the Israelites were told they are going to be given the promised land, as soon as they got around Jericho, Jericho had an occupant inside. But they, they had to arise and 
do whatever it needed for them to do so that they can occupy Jericho. Lakini ilibidi wainuke ili wafanye kile ambacho kilihitajika ili wachukue Jericho. Oh my brother my sister this morning as I stand here my desire is that the warrior spirit inside of you will be stirred up so that you can arise and tell the enemy you have been scaring me long enough it is time up. Wakati umeisha Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so, who art thou, O great mountain? Basi wewe ni nani mlima mkuu? It is time for you to begin asking that question. Ni wakati umefika wewe pia uanze kuuliza hilo swali. Identify yourself, O great mountain. Itambulishe wewe mlima mkuu. Who is this who has been bothering my children? Ni nani huyu ambaye amekuwa ni tatizo kwa watoto wangu? Who is this who has been creating stagnation in my life? Ni nani huyu ambaye amekuwa akizuia maisha yangu kuendelea? Who is this who is causing my spouse to keep being in the bars drinking? Ni nani huyu anamfanya mume wangu awe kwenye It's time to rise in violence. The Bible says that since the time of John the Baptist the kingdom suffers violence. Biblia sema kwamba tangu wakati wa Yohana mtakatifu ufalme ni wa kivita. And it is the violent who will take it by force. Ni wale wenye nguvu ambao watachukua kwa lazima. The Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Daniel 11 mstari wa 32. That they who know their God shall be strong. Wanasema kwamba wale wa mjua wa Mungu and they shall do exploits in this very year my sister you will do exploits but you need to avail yourself so that the lord can make you into a new threshing sledge you need to avail yourself so that the lord can give you sharp teeth so that the mountains that have constantly been standing before you can be dealt with and so who are you na hivyo basi wewe ni nani great mountain wewe mlima mkuu some of us the great mountain is barrenness wengine wetu milima hii ni utasa and not just barrenness of the fruit of the womb na si utasa tu wa tumbo but it is barrenness all over lakini ni utasa kila maeneo you put your hand on a business it cannot progress unaanzisha biashara haiwezi kuendelea you decide you're going to get into farming it cannot not progress. <laughs> Anything you touch to do, do is it a job it cannot progress. Why? Because the mountain of barrenness is standing before you. Causing you not to progress. And you know that is the work of the mountain. Mountains are normally effective because they block progress and movement forward. Na hiyo ndio kazi ya milima sababu kazi ya milima ni And so for as long as you're standing and you're not moving forward the mountain doesn't have a problem. They will wait for you until the day you say I cannot continue marching on this spot and you start making progress. As soon as you begin moving forward the mountain presents itself. It could be the mountain of generational patterns. And so as you begin moving forward you see this mountain and you begin saying you know what kwetu watu wa holewagi awakaagi kwando that is the mountain that has presented itself and you need to address it and make sure it is threshed to the floor. Na lazima ushughulikie Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When you begin to say that now I have to progress in business, then another mountain presents itself and you begin remembering where you came from, where you never even used to have matatus mungepanda juu ya tractors. I'm talking about myself. Amen. Mwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. That was the only available means of transport, a tractor zikiingia kwa mashamba ya miwa. And so if the, in your mind you begin conceiving that you can be able to drive a car that mountain presents itself. Hivyo basi unapoanza kuanza kwenye mawazo yako kwamba uweze ukaingia kwenye gari uka 
you, be, you begin thinking that there is a day you can take an aeroplane, you know, and move out of this nation. Then you think, where I come from, there's nobody who has even ever gone to Tanzania. How can I even be dreaming of, of going to the U.S.? It is time to ask the mountain to name themselves. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It is time to arise and fight. Viciously. Because the Lord is giving us sharp teeth. What are the sharp teeth? The Bible tells me that the word of the Lord is sharper than a two-edged sword. The, the teeth that we need is the word of the Lord. And God is saying he is sharpening it, but you have to avail yourself so that it can be sharpened inside of you. The, Bi the Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 11b Thou are word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Still in Psalms 119 verse 1 of 5 the Bible says Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is the teeth that you need and it needs to be sharpened in you so that as you're facing your mountain, you can speak to it the word of the Lord, not your word, the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you need the word. Read the word. Study the word. Hide the word in your heart. Then you will be victorious. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When generational patterns are coming and you begin thinking that you are cast with a curse and that the person who cast you died. It is time for you to remind yourself that Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says that Jesus took our curses upon himself by hanging on the cross. Amen. And so he cannot have been cast and I continue being cast. He carried it out of my life. When, when the enemy comes and he begins telling you how you can never make it in life, you can never be blessed, you are coming from the least family. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And so you speak to that mountain and remind it, remind it that you are telling me I cannot be blessed. No, I have my blessings that have been released to me. It is in heavenly places. All I need to do is to call on it so that it can manifest physically. And so you need the word of God. You need the word of God whether you are a young person or you are an old person. You need the word of God. In this year 2024. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Number two, you need prayer. You cannot be able to have a different life. You cannot be a person who can be able to turn the world upside down unless you're a man of prayer or a woman of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We must learn to tarry in the place of prayer. We cannot afford to depend on the pastors and ministry teams only for prayer. And I don't have a problem about them standing here and you coming to connect. Connecting is okay. But, but you need to know God for yourself and to communicate with him for yourself so that you'll know his will concerning your life. You need to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You need to be full time in prayer. The Bible says pray without 
seizing. And it's our mom, Pastor Alice Unomali says that a part-time Christian cannot defeat a full-time devil. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell them, my brother, if it's a brother or my sister, tell them, do you know that the enemy is a full-time enemy? Turn to the other one and ask them, do you know the devil is working full-time? We need to understand that the devil is working full-time. He is laying in a trap for you. And only prayer will be able to detonate that trap you must know the power of midnight prayer. You must know the power of 3 a.m. prayer. You must know the power of prayer. Because that is what will remove you from fighting the wrong enemy and beginning to engage the right enemy. Is your spouse having an affair outside? Do not, you have no business going to look for that woman. All you need to do is to ensure your altar is constantly on fire. So that you take time in the place of prayer, in the altar of fire, that fire will handle that woman outside there. You don't need to go attacking them and looking for ways of boiling water and pouring on them, my, brother, my sister. Prayer, prayer is a weapon of mass destruction. And so we must rise up in our prayer. Corporately, we must pray. Individually, we must pray. Because prayers will open doors for you. So you need the word of God. You need prayer. And you need faith. You need faith. So that whatever word that you will read you will take it seriously <laughs> and walk on it. The Bible says at a time when Jesus had left the disciples somewhere and in the fourth watch of the night Jesus was appearing to them while they were in the boat but Jesus was walking on water. And so Peter tells Jesus, if it is you, bid me to come. And Jesus told him, come. And immediately Peter stepped out of the boat. And he started walking on the word of God. He was walking on the word C-O-M-E. C-O-M-E, come. He had faith that this word is true. I can walk on it. What does the word of God say concerning your situation? That word, pick it. Hide it in your heart. Walk on it. Has the Lord said that you are the blessed of the Lord? It does not matter where you come from. It doesn't matter the kind of community. It doesn't matter the papers and the degrees you have. If the Lord has said that you are blessed, then walk on the word blessed. Walk on it. It, irrespective of your tribe walk on it because for some of us our trouble is you know I am not coming from the right tribe no walk on it in the, in the presence of God you are from the right tribe walk on the word of God and you will be blessed praise the name of the Lord as I come to the end just want to wind up so that we can pray. Who are you? 
Wewe ni nani? Oh great mountain. Mlima mkuu. Who are you? Wewe ni nani? Oh great mountain. Wewe mlima mkuu. Which mountain has been bothering you? Ni mlima upi ambao umekuwa ukikutatiza? Today I want to give you a chance. Siku ya leo nataka nikupe nafasi. To ask that mountain. Uulize huo mlima. Who are you? Wewe ni nani? Is it the mountain of cancer? Je, ni mlima wa saratani? Who are you? Wewe ni nani? <laughs> Is it hypertension? Je, ni kushinikizo la damu? Who are you? Wewe ni nani? Is it a marriage that is at risk? Pengine ni ndoa ambayo iko hatarini. Who are you? Wewe ni nani? Praise the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libariki. Because if you do not know its name, kwa sababu kama hujui jina lake, you cannot address it. Basi hauwezi ukalizungumzia. A few years ago, miaka michache iliyopita, we were praying for a girl tulikuwa tunamwambia msichana who was possessed. Ambaye alikuwa amepagawa. And so as we prayed for her we started casting out demons. And we were like in the name of Jesus come out. And nothing was happening she was laughing. So at some point we went like who are you? <laughs> and immediately the, the, the whatever spoke. <laughs> and they said sisi si mapepo. We are not demons. Sisi si mapepo. We are marine spirits. Sisi ni maroho za baharini. Sisi ni majini. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. And it was until we got to know what it was that we were dealing with. Na ni baada tu ya kujua kile ambacho tulikuwa na shughulikia. That that girl was set free. Kwamba huyo msichana ni kwa huru. Because now we were addressing kwa sababu sasa tulikuwa tunashughulikia praise the name of the lord amen today if i were to call out the name margaret kama leo nikilita jina margaret not all of us will come si kila mtu atakuja only those who are called margaret margaret bonesa sifiwe and this is the same principle that jesus had when he went at lazarus tomb na huu huu ndio msimamo ambao Yesu alikuwa nao alipoenda kwenye kaburi la Lazaro. And when he got there, na baada ya kwenda pale, he did not say, "Oh, ye, come out." Hakusema, "Enyi." Because tokeni. if he did that, so many dead bodies would have come out. Kwa sababu kama angefanya hivyo, mili mingi ya wafu ingetoka. But he said, "Lazarus." Lakini akasema, "Lazaro, come forth." Toka. And only Lazarus. Na ikawa ni Lazaro pekee came out of the grave aliyetoka toka kaburini because his interest was to resurrect Lazarus sababu nia yake ilikuwa ni kumfufua Lazaro this morning asubuhi ya leo as we get to a, a session of prayer tunapoingia kwenye kipindi cha maombi you have to let it identify itself lazima ulifanya lijitambulishe then you will command it according to mark chapter 11 verse 22 and 23 alafu utaliamuru kulingana na mariko oh you mountain of hey, stagnation wewe mlima wa kuchelewa oh you mountain of barrenness wewe mlima wa utasa oh you mountain of poverty ewe mlima wa maskini oh you mountain mountain of diabetes ewe mlima wa kisukari you mountain of cancer wewe mlima wa saratani get thee removed toka and be cast into the sea na utupwe baharini so that as we are walking out of this compound today hivyo basi tunapotoka mahali hapa leo we are going with no mountain tutaenda bila milima praise the name of the lord jina la bwana li i want to request us to be upstanding ngeomba tusimame be upstanding And the Bible says that he will make us na Biblia sema kwamba tatufanya into a new threshing floor with sharp teeth chenye meno makali with sharp teeth chenye meno makali and the sharp teeth we've said is the word of god na hii haya meno makali tumesema kwamba ni neno la Mungu today i want each and every one of us siku ya leo nataka kila mtu to lift their voices ainue sauti yake and begin asking naanza kuuliza As per what has been surrounding you jinsi kulingana na yale mambo ambayo yamekuzunguka who are you wewe ni nani oh great mountain wewe mlima mkuu and you're not pleading na hauombi tu kwenye mikebu 
you are commanding that they will identify themselves. Have, have they been uh, disturbing your children? Who are you? Have they been disturbing your health? Who are you? Have they been disturbing your marriage? Is it your workplace? Who are you? Someone who is angry. Someone who has developed holy anger. Come on, lift your voice and begin asking. Who are you, O great mountain? Who are you? In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent will take it by force. Do we have violent people in the house tonight? Then I want to hear our voices beginning to ask and as they identify themselves you begin casting them into the sea. Remember it's not by might neither by power. It is by the spirit of God. He says he will help us. Can someone grow violent right now and begin calling, begin calling, begin asking, begin casting in the name of Jesus because I can see a woman here who is going to walk out with the son having received freedom, with the husband having received freedom and a release in the name of Jesus. I can see a man here who has been crying in his workplace because things have become bad. But I can see them walking out of this place, having the Lord given them a release. Who are you, mountain? Who are you, mountain, that has been standing before me? Don't you know the Lord is helping me? In the mighty name of Jesus, Lebreka Ziente Sorebasha Lalamahana. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare you mountain of stagnation, you mountain of delay, you mountain of barrenness. We command you out of our lives in Jesus' name, you mountain of sickness and diseases, you who have paralyzed the children of God. God, mountain of sickness and disease, mountain of diabetes, mountains of arthritis. Oh, Reketayana Lama Oh, you mountain of cancer, we command you to be cast into the sea in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, you mountain, we command you to be cast into the sea, the mountains of poverty. Yes, we command you to be cast into the sea in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, this afternoon we declare and decree that there is freedom being released in this house. There is freedom being released in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. There is freedom. My God, my God, thank you, my Father, because you're releasing someone, my God, this morning. You're releasing someone, oh yes, from the bondage that the enemy has kept them for a long time. You are releasing somebody tonight. You are releasing someone this morning in the mighty name of Jesus from all generational patterns in the name of Jesus. You mountain calling yourself witchcraft. Today we pull you down in the name of Jesus. We thresh you today for the Lord has given us teeth to thresh in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Abba Father we bless you. Abba Father we honor you. We give you praise. We give you honor. You are good Jehovah. You are good my Father. Oh receive glory and honor. As I invite the ministry team just to come to the front. Maybe you're there and you're saying this mountain has been so 
tall this mountain is so high I need to connect with somebody I need to connect with somebody you can come running to the altar right now come running to the altar only you knows what the mountain has done in your life only you knows the challenges that have been in your life you can come running so that you can connect to someone maybe you need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ you can come running today come running today to the altar in the name of Jesus Christ because the Lord is here his fire is in this place and wherever he is we know he does good you have been crying concerning your job you have been crying concerning your marriage come running to the altar come running to the altar today the Lord is saying I will help you I will help you I will help you yes I will help you that's what the Lord is saying this morning and he says it's not by might it's not by power but it is by the Spirit of God we exalt you Jesus we magnify your name keep coming keep coming keep coming keep coming oh yes in Jesus name you can even give your life to Christ so that you will always be assured that the Lord is with you in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus just keep coming in Jesus name oh yes it could be a mountain of sickness <laughs> yes the, the, the enemy has brought sickness and they are saying since it was in your generational patterns then it is okay for you to have it no today as I stand on this altar I decree and declare every generation illnesses are being healed today in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus I know there are, there are, there are ministers at the tent at the overflow just come while the rest of us continue praying do not relent Compe continue continue casting all those things into the sea in the mighty name of Jesus continue casting in Jesus name some of us have gone to school we have the papers but there is no job that is forthcoming we are decreeing and declaring the doors are opening today in the mighty name of Jesus come running to the mercy seat come running to the mercy seat in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we give you praise oh God yes in the name of Jesus 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 father we thank you because this mountain today is being removed all powers of opposition today all powers of darkness today are being removed in the name of Jesus they are being removed in the name of Jesus oh, the altar is open also for salvation this morning the altar is open for salvation this morning yes in the name name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you've constantly been living with a fear of death the Lord is saying you can come because with long life I will satisfy you with long life I will satisfy you in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus we thank the Lord because he is here he is here this morning he is here this morning oh in the mighty name of Jesus oh yes Lord we worship you oh we give you thanks we give you praise we give you honor Jesus we thank you thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. You can keep coming. Do not go home today unsaved. When the altar is open and the Lord is here, do not go home today unsaved. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. 
Hogan. 